Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Julie Drole, and I'm here from uh, the University of Calgary in Edmonton and involved in the Prairie Node of the Pathways to Prosperity Initiative. And this afternoon, I'm going to be speaking to you about some of our preliminary findings from a knowledge synthesis project uh, that began in June and was launched in July. So we're uh, only four and a half months into this initiative. Um, but I think that uh, what we have to share with you will be of interest, um, particularly given the renewed emphasis on employers um, that we're discussing today and that we're increasingly seeing. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the members of the research team who are involved in this synthesis project, um, who are also partners of Pathways to Prosperity. Uh, Mayor, who's here today. Romana Pasca, who's here from Immigrant and Multicultural uh, Services Society in Prince George in Northern British Columbia. Elisa Gredling from Kamloops Immigrant Services in the interior of British Columbia, as well as Brenda Smith, who is a librarian at Thompson Rivers, and a number of research assistants who've been invaluable in their contributions to this project. So I'd like to map out for you some of the context and um, certainly don't wish to repeat in detail some of the information that's already been shared with you today. Um, but we know from Canada's economic action plan that training is not sufficiently aligned to the skills employers needs or to the jobs that are available, resulting in a skills mis mismatch. And we see this um, continually in the press, in the media. Um, it's also an issue globally in terms of this issue of global mismatch and, and what this looks like and how it can contribute to unemployment and slow economic growth potentially. Um, we also know um, that skilled Canadian-born workers are becoming increasingly difficult to find and that immigrants are playing um, a more significant role in Canada's labour force, um, as we've been discussing uh, today. Employers are certainly actively encouraged to hire uh, newcomers, but they face many challenges with the lack of recognition of their foreign credentials and also uh, their, their, for, their foreign education and also their work credentials. So we're beginning to see a greater involvement of employers in newcomer recruitment in Canada and a greater reliance on many of these new entry streams, which, which is the topic of our session today. Uh, st international students, temporary foreign workers, uh, Canada's experienced class, these are all pathways that are creating new service requirements and new patterns of federal and provincial service eligibility and also availability, um, which I'm sure many of you are experiencing um, on a daily basis. So there's a need to better understand the possible roles that employers might play in newcomer settlement and adaptation, especially in the context of small cities. And so the goal of this knowledge synthesis grant is to describe the state of knowledge, so what is known in the literature about the behavior of employers and employer organizations in promoting newcomers' absorption and integration. Um, and so today in my presentation, I'd like to focus on some of this literature that we're examining that relates to employer involvement um, in newcomer settlement and also related best practices. So some of the questions that I think are relevant to this panel today is, you know, what is the value proposition for hiring newcomers from the perspective of employers? How could employers be motivated to play a greater role in the social and economic integration? Um, and what strategies might provide them with the tools and resources to do that? How might settlement agencies assist employers in regard to newcomer settlement? And what kind of role might employers play vis-a-vis -vis families? Um, in terms of the methodology, I, I'd like to just spend a moment on this. Um, it, it's quite rigorous when you undertake um, a systematic scoping review such as this one, where we're considering a wide range of literature sources. This includes academic peer-reviewed journal articles and also gray literature and various methodologies. Um, what we're aiming to do is provide a broad overview of current research, so what's known, and to document some of the key components so that we can identify are there any gaps in, in the existing evidence. And there are a number of components, um, and I'd like to just talk a little bit about that. Some of this, these are some examples of some of the search terms um, that we've utilized in the project to date. And this, these are some of the many academic databases in which we've been mining for data, um, looking for uh, articles, and you'll see here that we found 541 promising articles um, that were identified. We also included gray literature. So gray literature includes um, reports and publications from government, from nonprofit organizations, immigrant settlement agencies, et cetera. And uh, we identified uh, a number of those, and I'll, I'll show you specifically what those are. We've also looked at web sources that are available on the internet 
and we also sent out 179 emails, and many of you were probably contacted uh, through our project for um, any promising reports or publications from the field, from employ employers, employment counselors, and, and I'd just like to thank um, those of you in the audience who've contributed or sent us reports to date. Um, so the results that we're seeing so far, um, you'll see that many of the potential literature, this is sort of the first sweep of what we found. Um, we're looking at 371 peer-reviewed articles, 170 from the gray or popular literature searches, 63 uh, web-based sources, and th so far 13 reports have come in from employers and employment councils and immigrant settlement agencies. Um, in terms of what we've included and excluded so far, we've developed um, qu quite a robust sheet for looking at determining the process of inclusion and exclusion of these articles. But we have 141 of the 371 uh, that have been included from the peer-reviewed literature and 100 out of 170 in the grayer popular literature. Um, so far, we've identified 18 themes. And um, the themes that are most prevalent in the literature which may be of interest, is um, related to the supply and demand of skills for the labor market. So there we had 71 articles from peer-reviewed sources and 39 from gray uh, or popular literature sources. The impact of immigration-related policies and programs on the supply and development of skills. Solutions to better integrate skilled immigrants in the labor market. Employer and or employers organizations role in the absorption and integration of newcomers promising practices or policies for absorption and integration of newcomers, and employers' perspectives on hiring newcomers or temporary foreign workers. Some of the gaps are what we're not finding in the literature include some of these themes. So there's, we actually found no articles relating to employers' role vis-a-vis -vis workers' families, uh, and very limited literature on the employers' perspectives on the skill shortage, the knowledge of employer capacity and practices for assisting newcomer settlement, employers' value proposition for hiring newcomers, gaps or barriers that might exist between community services and employers, employers' use of immigrant flows to accelerate labor market absorption, and finally, labor market skills implementation from employers' perspectives. So in terms of, um, oh gosh, three minutes. Um, in terms of our preliminary findings, what we see is that while employers are playing a central role in the social integration of immigrants in the labor market, they have received very little attention in the literature. So that there are gaps, and I think this is an important finding for us to report on this, is that there are gaps in the literature as to what employers might do or what they're currently doing to help newcomers and their families settle. At the same time though, there are numerous toolkits, guides, and resources available on the internet for employers to assist with recruitment issues, building a welcoming and inclusive workforce, retention issues and engagement in the workplace. But what we're seeing is a lot less information on the perspectives of the employers themselves. Um, the literature certainly identifies some of the challenges uh, that we see and that I think we know related to the lack of experience or knowledge regarding specific positions, the difficulty with uh, recognizing credentials in Canada, um, et cetera. Language is also a concern that's raised in a number of articles um, and how these combinations of factors can lead skilled immigrants being unemployed or underemployed in Canada. Um, there is a bit of literature on temporary foreign workers, uh, particularly within the global economy. So again, considering the global skill shortage and what this looks like. Um, in the temporary foreign worker program, it intends to serve employer needs to help fill vacant positions as rapidly as possible. But at the same time, employers are also seeking more foreign trained workers and looking for permanent employees. So um, important to report on that. There's also a role for immigrant and newcomers employers, councils, and supporting employers with the integration of internationally trained individuals in the workplace. And also nonprofits facilitate the integration of immigrants in a variety of ways by providing employment counseling, preparation, and placement services. Um, there's an interest also, I think, in better understanding the role of employers and recruitment in francophone minority communities. Um, what we see in the literature, which was raised earlier today, um, was that um, francophone immigrants who are looking for work commensurate with their education levels are limited by the small number of jobs on the market requiring mastery of French and not English. And, and what does that look like? So 
there's a need to consider the role of employers in the recruitment and socioeconomic integration, particularly in francophone minority communities. Um, I know I'm running out of time here, but I think it's important to say that um, there is <laughs> there is no single magic solution to the skills issue required across Canada. There are different labor markets that need different responses in different regions of the country. So we need to also think about how local driven initiatives um, can play a role in immigration and integration with regards to this issue. Um, Chedley discussed uh, for the situation with foreign students. Um, we see a gap in the literature on the role of employers in terms of their motivation to hire foreign students and their transition to permanent residency and what those potential contributions of employers might look like in this context. Um, certainly around employment practices, we do see a number of leading employers in Canada who seem to be doing quite a good job. They're looking at, this is particularly in the financial, healthcare, energy and manufacturing se sectors, where they're using a variety of combinations of different ways to hire and integrate um, and retain skilled immigrant employees. They're also looking to work towards uh, developing religious and cultural accommodations in the workplace and also working to increase diversity on their boards. So it's interesting too though that those um, areas are largely um, in Toronto, Vancouver and Calgary. Um, just my last slide, summary of employers <laughs> practices. Um, so whether these employer practices are promising practices, I'm not sure at this time because our analysis is ongoing, but it would be great to be able to identify some of these um, in the literature. And um, thank you very much. And uh, if anyone would like more information, um, we'll have a report ready um, in about a month's time.